we're going to talk about how artificial intelligence is impacting IT service management. But I want to start with a uh, quick review of IT service management. And I also don't want to just, you know, dump a lot of features, which I will, but, but I, I want to do it like a, guiding us through the different stages of AI. Okay, we've been working with AI for many years. Right now, it has evolved a lot within the last few years, but it doesn't mean that AI is a new concept. Okay, it's been there around for many years. We have been using it for many years. So we're going to cover like the different stages of AI and how they have been impacting IT service management. Okay, so first, uh, short disclaimer here or long perhaps, whatever I'm telling you right now, I'm going to show it the features that are not yet in our tool, okay? And at least not in the public version, okay? What, whatever I will show here is not like we didn't install it. We can change in the next future. So just a small disclaimer. Everything that I'm sharing with you is not definite. It, it's not, it, it may change in the next uh, weeks, years, or months, okay? Which are the three core practices that you think IT service management provides to the market? Okay, there are many practices, you know, knowledge management, incident management, service request, service level management, whatnot. Okay, there are many of them. Which ones do you think are the three most important ITS and practices? So scan this QR code, you will see like three open uh, fields. Just type the name of the three practices that you think are the most important. Let's see. Let's see this one. Okay, for service management, I'm going to assume it's service request management. Service management is the overall concept, the maybe service request management, incident management, change management, knowledge and also management. Yeah, yeah, these are some of the most important practices. So uh, asset management provides a repository for all the other practices to understand what's the infrastructure, how are different CIs connected to provide service. Um, knowledge management provides the knowledge repository for uh, incident managers or service desk teams to be able to uh, resolve the incidents faster. Uh, change management help us register and plan all of our changes, evaluate the risk, and make them more uh, increase the success rate of the change. And of course, incident management is the fundamental process, right? And service request incident and, and service request are pretty tied up. Service request is about fulfilling the requests that our uh, customers need and incident solving the problem. So, yeah, I like it. So, a quick intro to Jira Service Manager. We're going to talk about AI features and how AI is helping IT service management, specifically our tool Jira Service Manager. So for those of you who are not familiar with Alassian or with uh, Jira Service Management, I will do a five-minute intro. So first, Alassian is an Australian company founded in Sydney in 2002. We have around 15 products. Uh, we have a huge marketplace where our partners or people around the world develop their own apps or connectors to, to our products, and they upload the, the, the products here. So many of them are for free, others you, you have to pay for them, but these are made by our partners. Uh, we serve 80% uh, of the Fortune 500 uh, companies. We are used in basically every country in the world. We have a good number of customers, partners, and employees all around. Okay. Um, the traditional view of IT service management. So ITIL, created a framework or provided a framework to manage IT service, to try to change our mindset from delivering IT, delivering technology, to delivering business services supported by IT. Okay? But by doing so, ITIL provided a few practices and processes that we have already discussed, like incident change knowledge, and so on and so forth. By doing that, I feel unintentionally created silos. I know you have experienced this, but when you're 
on the incident management process, you don't want to talk with the change management guys. That's a different process, and let them you know work on their own process and, and sort things out. Okay, so that that happened in the market. I've been in the ITSM market for a few years, 15 plus, and, and I, I know this happens in a lot of uh, companies. So what we're trying to do in Atlassian is avoid company, sorry, the other areas from navigating uh, among all of these silos and try to provide like a consolidated framework where they can uh, foster innovation and adopt new ways of working and, and you know, have a collaboration and people come. Okay. We do that with our LSM platform. The, the tool we're going to be talking uh, about today is Jira Service Management. It's our ITSM tool, and it helps us um, understand the requests and incidents from our end users, provide a unified file support platform to capture all of the requests and you know, handle all, all of the tickets to uh, provide service according to. Uh, negotiated service developers. Okay, there are many other products in, in our platform, like Jira Software to track features and, and fix bugs in software. Confluence, that is our knowledge base, where we can have our documentation, uh, our uh, reviews of incidents that are major. And we have a, an overall lesson platform um, that help us uh, integrate all, all the information that we have in our product. Okay, let's talk about uh, how AI is helping IT service manage. Artificial intelligence is the ability of a digital computer to perform tasks that are commonly associated with human beings. Okay, there are many stages in the evolution of artificial intelligence. We are going to talk about three of them rule based artificial intelligence, neural networks, and generative AI. So let's start from the case. We said that if a computer can perform tasks that are associated with intelligent beings, that that can be considered artificial intelligence. Okay. So if a computer had, can can make a decision based on three uh, defined rules, that can be considered artificial intelligence. The most basic example example is when you try to pay for your morning coffee. If, if you don't have enough money in your account, the transaction will be declined. Okay, that's a very simple example of uh, a rule based artificial intelligence. So it, it looks simple, however, it has provided many valuable tools in the IT service management spectrum. For example, majority calculation. So whenever we receive an incident or a request from our users, we can calculate the priority of that request based on the urgency and the impact. Okay, and we can have rules to do that. So, a rule based engine can help us calculate what's the priority of an incident based on the urgency. Okay. Very simple rule based uh, AI that we've been using for many years. There are others like calculating service level agreements. So, we have SLAs. A rule based engine can help us determine if we are fulfilling a request within the agreed SLAs or if we are exceeding or violating SLAs. Okay? Workflows. This is something that we've been using in ITSM tools for many years and it's a rule based as well. So we can determine which path should a request of instant take based on the rule. Okay? Are you guys familiar with workflows? Have you used your service manager workflows at any point in time? Okay, so then the question for you which practices, which ITSM practices can be streamlined by uh, using workflows? I would say workflow is usually related to incident management and change management. I can see asset management as well. But I think that incident management and perhaps change management are, are the uh, process that kind of pay more benefit from using the world. So all of these examples are, are examples of rule-based artificial intelligence features that have been out there for many, many years. Okay? And maybe perhaps the, one of the most important ones, automation. 
In Jira Service Management, we, we have an automation platform where we can configure certain rules. You have to define a trigger and then potential filters and, and then what uh, does the automation have to do? And they are usually connected with the work. So you, you define certain stages of uh, your tickets or your requests and you can trigger automations to make things faster for you. Okay, all of these are good examples of AI that we have been using for many years. But recently, we have seen an evolution of AI that is changing the way we work. And that's thanks to neural networks, okay? So to define a neural network, I would start by trying to tell you why rule-based artificial intelligence is not good enough to solve certain kind of problems. For example, if you want to explain to a computer that this is a dog, what should you do? What are the rules <laughs> that a computer can uh, analyze to determine that this is a dog? Any ideas? Reinforced learning. Sorry? Reinforced learning. You do reinforced learning? Reinforced learning can tell you this dog. Yep. And then you do over. But, but if you try to put the rules, so what are the rules to define that this is a dog? Um, it has fur, it has a snout, it has two eyes, you know, four legs. So trying to define the rules is it, not very easy. But let's say you do, okay? You, you have to define all the rules to tell that this is a dog. Then if you show to the computer this picture, will the computer think it's a dog? Yeah. Well, I have to go. Okay? And then you start defining the rules. Okay, this is not a dog. This is a cat because it has you know, pointy ears and it, maybe whiskers. the whiskers are longer, the legs are longer, and once you define all the rules, then you stop this picture. <laughs> Will it think it's a dog or a cat or who knows? Right? So when you have that kind of a problem, it's not easy to solve it by rules. Okay, so how do you solve it? Well, you teach the computer. The way we learn as kids. Okay? We will learn that that was a dog because we saw a dog once and then we saw a different one and then we saw a different one and, and we know that that was a wow wow, right? And, and then eventually we distinguish the wow wow or some meow meow because they look different without actually understanding the rules, but understanding what? The pattern. The patterns. Okay? There are certain patterns in things that help us as people understand the difference between a dog and a cat and a Star Wars character. Okay? Patterns. So, neural networks are algorithms that allow computers to recognize patterns to solve common problems. Okay? Some of the top applications that we've seen worldwide. In, in, in the use of neural networks are image recognition. With computers, and you see it every day on your phone. Okay, you take pictures, and now your phone subject to, hey, I've seen this person many times. Do you want to put a name on, on that person so I can find all, all the pictures for that person? Okay, that's done by using neural networks to recognize power. And it's just a bunch of statistical algorithms that can analyze patterns in language, you know, in text, in words, or in pictures. A neural network has three basic layers. It's maybe a little bit technical, but you have an input layer that is the place that you use either to train the neural network, because the neural network will learn by analyzing data. Okay, the more data it analyzes, the more it will learn. Okay, and then it has a hidden layer that is a bunch of statistical algorithms that calculate probabilities and understand the patterns within that data. And based on the analysis of what you put in the input layer and the algorithms, it will give you a percentage of certainty of that being a dog or not. Okay, that's pretty much how uh, neural networks work. 
So how does all of this relate to IT service management? Okay, right now we have released a, a beta version of an intent-based virtual agent. An intent-based virtual agent is not linked to rules anymore, it's linked to patterns. Okay, so it will allow you understand the conversation that you're having with the virtual agent, and you can configure the virtual agent to take different routes depending on the confidence level of analyzing that uh, request. Okay, so it will use a neural network. And based on that percentage of certainty, it will direct you to different outcomes. Okay, this is available in beta, right? If you're interested, you can have it. Okay, it's, it's publicly available in beta. So, a, a, an intent based virtual agent can help you have more or smarter conversations and understanding better what are you requesting by analyzing the patterns of what you have said previously. And, and since it's not word-based anymore, even if you phrase a sentence in, in a completely different way, it will detect the patterns and direct you to the right path. Okay, so this is a game changer in IT service management. By using neural networks, our tool can also start surfacing the most relevant requests and uh, articles, knowledge articles, when you perform a search in the health center, okay? This was already there, but it was based on keywords. Now it will start working based on patterns. The same for knowledge articles. When an agent is solving an incident or is analyzing the impact of the change, they will be able to see the most relevant uh, knowledge articles based on that uh, pattern analysis of, of the incident itself. So it's pretty interesting. The, the tool will use that natural language understanding to see what's going on in the incident and sort of the most relevant articles to help you solve the problem. So, generative AI is an evolution of neural networks. What it does is it understands the requirements using neural networks. It understands the intents on what you're asking to the AI engine. But what it does is it analyzes a huge amount of data and tries to generate original content or content that seems original based on a repository of information. Okay, so it's, it's an evolution of a neural network that not only understands the requirement, but can also provide an answer that seems original or natural based on a good number of uh, sentences or, or a, a good amount of information that it has already stored. Okay, this is what is changing the way we work in the last few months. I don't think even years. When was ChatGPT released? Not even a year ago. A year? Yeah. 10 plus. Mm -hmm. yeah. A little bit more than a year. Okay. So let me show you. A, well, first, the, the definition of the generative AI. It's a, again, statistical algorithms that allow machines to generate content that seems original based on patterns in existing data sets. Okay. And let me show you a small preview of what we are doing at Alasim, something called Alasim Intelligence.
a few examples of how generative AI is changing the way we provide the service. First, summarizing tickets. It's super time consuming for agents when they get an incident assigned and they have to read and read you know, through the content of an incident to be able to determine what's going on and to, to determine next steps. And it happens a lot that an agent receives the incident and tries again what somebody has already tried or sends to the user the same knowledge article that somebody has already sent. Okay, and that can for sure uh, piss off uh, users and, and, and be a non very productive use of time. Okay, so with a lasting intelligence, we'll be able to do something like this. So think of all the time agents will save with this feature. So, same question which ITSM practices? Can be kind of benefit from that feature from summarizing tickets. Maybe you have like the information yeah. beforehand, and, and instead of reading like maybe minutes or whatever, yeah, you just ask you know, to summarize it for you. Because one of the most important uh, practices here will be incident management. So to uh, reduce a lot the number of, oh, sorry, the amount of time. Taken to review the information on this. So, what else? A few other features that uh, we can leverage from generative AI. So, we, we can help agents. We have uh, mentioned ChatGPT. ChatGPT is a good conversational engine and can help you suggestions on what to write in specific circumstances. Okay, so here you can use a lesson intelligence. To maybe change the tone of your sentence to make it more empathetic. Okay? Change the tone, summarize, or write more if that's if you want. Okay. Another one, and um, this is very simple. Okay. Some things you need to spend a lot of time trying to create a response that it's easier to understand. And maybe you want to include a table and, and spending some time on formatting a table. Can be quite benefits. Okay, what about this? Okay. So, this will save a lot of time. Okay. Another one quickly summarize not only an incident, but a KB or, or, or a page, a complex page. So, for example, this one we have. So, it's a fictitious company and it has challenges, yes, stakeholder, all the concerns. A lot of information related to that company, and you can just go and click the summarize button, and it will give you a little sweet and short summary of what's going on in that company's page. But whenever you have this massive knowledge articles, you can ask AI to summarize them for you or to find the right information within all of that body of knowledge. We pride ourselves having a low code, no code platform. However, when you have to learn JQL, and you guys remember JQL, it seems a lot like coding, doesn't it? <laughs> so, okay. yeah, why if we could get rid of JQL? Well, we have this. So you can enter your query in natural language. The Jira query. You're not getting rid of it entirely, but it will save a lot of time. Now you can only find tune that, that uh, query to obtain the expected result. But now you don't need to spend a lot of time drafting your query from scratch and formatting it and whatnot. You just type what you want to see in natural language, and this will bring the result for you or something very close to what you need. And then you have to just adjust. What else? So we have a, a knowledge management automation engine. This is already out there. Where, where uh, in Confluence, you can have certain rules that uh, the tool suggests to organize your knowledge. Sometimes, yeah, knowledge base or knowledge.
knowledge bases are good, but sometimes they can grow organically and, and eventually they are not that functional. Not because there is not enough knowledge, but because it's too many of them. There's a lot of outdated knowledge. There are many articles that you don't use anymore. So there are a good number of um, rules that the tool can suggest you to do to, to, to optimize your knowledge base. But now with AI, you can ask in natural language, what do you want? How do you want to clean your knowledge base? And it will create these rules for you. Okay. So remember I told you about that intense chat line where you can create a, kind of a workflow, but that will be linked to patterns, not to, to people. Okay? Alaskan intelligence can not only give you that, but it can also suggest you which workflows should you configure based on your data. So it will analyze the history of your tickets and propose new workflows for you to automate based on the information that it already has. So it can tell you, okay, based on all the information that you have in your instance, I know that you, uh, you, you have requests from your users to access a production system. And I know the steps to provide those, those uh, access to the production system. So why not you automate this, put it in your virtual agent, and avoid you know, people from doing that repetitive task of providing access to production systems or to provide access to uh, Wi Fi? Yes, it will analyze your data and will propose you workflows to get rid of repetitive tasks and then just delegate them to the different things. All of this by analyzing the patterns in your company. So some upcoming features, uh, not related to AI, but to, to Jira service management. Um, first, we are doing a, a very interesting integration with our CIC tools, where you usually have like a pipeline of uh, releases, okay? And whenever you want to post a new release, we will have a new risk assessment engine that will analyze the new release based on the success rate and issues encountered in previous releases and will automatically, automatically either approve the, the uh, request or it will say, send you to some testing and staging before approving it, or it will classify it as a high risk and trigger an entirely different process. Okay, so this integration with your software and our CICD tools and your service management will, will uh, help to do an automatic risk assessment. We're working on that and we're very excited about this feature. So are you, sorry, are you saying that the person who's submitting the request to change is no longer the one classifying it as standard normal or the Okay, that's amazing. Yeah, based on the you know, success rate and, and uh, issues encountered in previous iterations of similar uh, releases, it, it will automatically classify the risk. So it takes that application uh, profile into account? Not only the application, but the complexity of the code, the instance, uh, so everything that you have on your CICD tools. So from analyzing the tool. There are many changes uh, in, that will be announced in the next few weeks regarding asset management. I know we have a lot of asset management uh, concerns from our users and customers and partners. So there are a few things there. So what, what we're going to do is we'll provide a few more options to populate the information in the asset management repository. So either by using discovery and integrating with third-party apps or by import. We'll, we'll provide many more, many mechanisms to, to the system. So yeah, there are a few exciting news that, that you will hear by November the 1st about uh, asset management, but it will completely change the way. <laughs> okay. And this is one that I think maybe my favorite. I, I, I like what we're doing with Unified Cloud. So what we're doing is we're trying to make 
our self-service portal, like the, the, the front end to handle any kind of request by using an intent engine. So we're going to use artificial intelligence neural network intent engine to understand any request coming from any channel. And also we're going to be able to direct those requests, not only to GR service management, but any other tool like Office 365, Trello, Workday, Google Forms, or even ServiceNow. Okay, so we want to be a front end, a generic front end that could use AI. Like for example, if you type return to the office, <laughs> it will provide you with uh, suggestions on how to handle that request regardless of the data source where the information is. So it will analyze Workday, ServiceNow, Zendesk, uh, Google, you know, whatever end of information you have. And, and, and it will direct you to that source to solve it. In this kind of so, a single point of entry for a query to multiple knowledge bases, regardless of the platform, the point of entry, as well as the domain, is the same and the source of knowledge. Yeah, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Still work in progress. I can remember the disclaimer. I should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we don't have it yet, but yeah, as soon as, 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 soon as we have it. And then, in terms of the health center, we're working a lot to improve the health center. And the idea is to use that health center uh, to be able to, for example, do single sign on. Right now, we know that it's a problem with the external customers that don't have a a Jira user, you know, place a ticket is that not possible? So we're working on that to add. We can also, we'll also be able to provide customer context. So if the person is raising a, a request, we should be able to integrate to, I don't know, CRM tools like, uh, let's say, Salesforce to, to have more context of the customer to know if, you know, uh, what kind of subscription that customer has. And then, uh, we'll have like different cues, maybe by language in, in our uh, portal. Uh, we will be able to customize the SLA a bit more to provide single sign on. So we are working a lot uh, to make this portal more useful and also more customized. We have uh, had a lot of uh, feedback from partners and customers about how our portal is not very flexible. So this is a working process. So expect many changes. The, the, keep informed on what's going on in the portal because it will evolve a lot in the next few months. I know there may be concerns regarding data privacy and in our term intelligence. We have already discussed a few of them, but if you have questions, uh, there are a few links. Uh, Natasha will send it to the we'll post share the presentation for you. And there are a few links in the presentation where you could see this this principle, but basically nothing changes, okay? Whatever we're doing with AI will remain protected as everything else in your current entities. Okay, thank you very much.